All right, this is how I look one day before the workout. Day zero, day 30, the ultimate reveal. Fitness YouTubers, one of the most influential people on the planet, helping millions of men around the world transform. But as they say, with great power comes an even greater responsibility. 1.5 to 1.3 0 0.8 1.2 1 gram of protein for every But as an ex-personal trainer, I believe that there's an even bigger problem that these so-called influencers will never tell you. And that's why I'm taking this into my own hands. That was me 14 days ago. Let's call that day zero. And this is me at day seven with some visible progress. Nothing life-changing, but it's better than nothing. And this is me today, day 15. Things are looking good, at least for now. On day one, I was benching 110 pounds for eight. Today, let's say I'm a little stronger than before. Progress. Yes, progress. Now we're getting somewhere. No pun intended. But what if your actions actually got you closer to your goal? despite your results not aligning with what the science nerds have to say. How much protein can you use in a single meal? So if you were closer to your goal than you were a week ago, perhaps then the haters are not always right. Or dare I say, the science is not always right. Now I'm gonna be honest with you and you might not like what I'm about to say, but hear me out. Ever since I started weight training about 10 years ago, I've never really tracked my protein intake, maybe for a day or two. And I get it, they say what you don't track, you can't manage. But for me, here's how I see building muscle. I'm always trying to figure out how to work smarter, not harder. Harder would be weigh everything you eat and drink, put it in your app. To work smarter would be eat to be fuller for longer, so you don't have to spend more time eating between meals. It's just more practical. If you're a bodybuilder, I get it. But there's a problem that most guys don't realize. The fitness industry has you highly focused on taking things like protein and supplements. It's actually a bigger problem than most would think, and not a short-term one either, but I believe that I may have the solution. So I'm not sure how one would go about proving that they don't take supplements, weigh their food, or track their macros. But here's two rules that I've been following for almost a decade. Keeping me relatively healthy, shredded, and building muscle at the same time. Without having to track everything I eat and drink. Number one, eat enough protein to keep you full for at least three to five hours. And that might require trial and error in order for you to find the right amount of protein that suits your lifestyle. For me as a new vegan, I've figured out that I only need about 20 grams or so of protein per meal. And that's about one third of a block of tofu. Knowing this will then allow me to streamline my meal preps without having to weigh or track. Number two, one third of your meal should be protein. For example, you might have one third of your meal as brown rice. That's your carbs or energy. The second third is vegetables for your vitamins and minerals. The last third is of course your protein. A simple rule that I've been applying for the last 10 years. One that you can apply regardless of where you are. But everyone's different, right? So how much protein do you need when it comes to building muscle? The biggest problem I see when it comes to nutrition as an ex-personal trainer is that people don't think of food in terms of protein, carbs, vitamin and mineral. Instead, they eat the exact same way that they were brought up or whatever's cheap and easy. And it's quite scary. Like if they were brought up eating white bread, they would continue eating white bread. 
Hey Google. Consuming too much white bread can contribute to obesity, heart disease. Like everything that I know now <laughs> is from doing just that. Not from school or anything, but also trial and error. Here's a pro tip. Try eating a fist size full of protein for one meal. And if that doesn't work, try eating a little more the next meal. But also high fiber foods like brown rice, vegetables, beans, legumes. These things will go a long way in terms of keeping you full. I mean, none of us knew how to walk from day dot. It's like practicing the same skill, improving every day. And over time, you're gonna become really good at this one thing. So at the start of the video, I posed the question, is science always right? Yeah, you could argue it is or it isn't, but what if what you're doing is the exact opposite or, you know, slightly different and it works? Then why must you listen to others' opinions, whether it's based on their opinions or based on science? Like if they say to build muscle, you need one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Yet you're here eating half a gram of protein per pound of body weight and you're still seeing gains. Haters are gonna hate. But the moment you've been waiting for, let's see how I look on day zero. Compared to how I look on day 30, along with the measurements. At the end of the day, it comes down to what kind of lifestyle you want to live, perhaps for the rest of your life. One where you track macros with every single little thing that you eat and drink. Or one where you eat based on how you feel, you eat to feel good. And also achieve your goals without the additional stress. And if it works, it's a win-win. 